write the number for each location. So you're identifying where's point A, B, C, D, and then some units to the left or to the right. This says move the red point to three different numbers other than 30 and record the locations of the blue point and the red point each time you move the red point. Okay, so I moved it to 23 and the blue point is now at 37. I have the blue point is at 33 and the red point is at 27. Here, the blue point is at 31, and the red point is at 29. This time, move the red point to three different numbers and record the location. I have the blue point is at 108, the red point is at 102. Then I have the blue point is at 106, and the red point is at 104. Here the blue point is at 110, and the red point is at 100. Move the red point to three different numbers and record the location of the blue point. So the blue point is at 2, the red point is at negative 2. The red point is at negative 5 and the blue point is at 5. This time the blue point is at 7 and the red point is at negative 7. What do you notice about the pairs of numbers? So in this case, the diamond was at 30. So for 30 to get to 37, that's seven away. And from 23 to get to 30, that's seven also. From 30 to 33 is three, and from 30 to 27 is three. Here at 105, to get to 104, that's a difference of one. And to get to 106 is a difference of one. To get to 100, that's a change of 5. And to get to 110 from 105, that's a change of 5. Here I have 2 and negative 2. Those are both 2 away from 0. These ones are both 5 away from 0. And these are both 7 away from 0. So the red and blue points are the same distance from the diamond. but they're in different locations. So one is above and one is below. It says opposites are numbers that are the same distance from zero on the number line, but on different sides of zero. So seven and negative seven are opposites. Six and negative six are opposites. Two and negative two are opposites. One and negative one are opposites. Same thing on that horizontal number line. These are both six away from zero. This is positive six and this is negative six. Let's find more opposites. Move the red point to find the opposite of the number that point A represents. Well, point A is in between six and eight. So we need to be between six and eight up here. And then check. It says, good job. Try another. Let's move point A. Now it's at 8. So the opposite should be 8 the other direction. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Those are both 8 away from 0. Next, we have A is at 1. 
So the red should be at negative 1. Negative 8, the opposite would be positive 8. This is at negative 9, so we need to be at positive 9. Let's see what happens if you get one wrong, just so that way you can guarantee that you've got them. Okay, I'm going to intentionally get this one wrong to see if what it tells us over here. So let's try again. So we were at negative 4, so we should be at positive 4. Now when we check, it tells us, good job. Here we have 4, 5, so we need to be at negative 4, negative 5. Negative 2, so positive 1, positive 2. This is between 8 and 10 is 9 and negative 9. Let's try finding opposites when using a different scale. So instead of counting by ones, this time they're counting by thirties. Move the red point to find the opposite of the number that represents point A. This is at negative 60, so we should be at positive 60. All right. This time they're counting by forties, so they're at negative 160. The opposite should be positive 160. Here they're at positive 280, so the opposite would be negative 280. If you're on the digital lesson, go ahead and try doing the next few numbers on your own. Then come back. You can pause the video here while you work. It asks, what do you notice about every number and its opposites? I stated that opposites are numbers that are the same distance from zero on the number line, but on different sides of zero, meaning one is to the left and one is to the right, or one is on the top and one is on the bottom. An integer is a number that can be represented as a whole number or as the opposite of a whole number. So our whole numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Integers include the negative versions of those. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And it is an infinite list of numbers as shown. So you can see they've got those little dots on the end to so that you can see they continue on forever in the positive and negative direction. So another example would be 19 is an integer. Negative 19 is an integer. 25 or 35 and negative 45. We have 62, negative 98. All of these are integers. They're whole numbers or they're opposites. Do you think every positive whole number has an opposite? Explain your reasoning. Well, the opposite of 5 would be negative 5. The opposite of 9 is negative 9. The opposite of 1 is negative 1. So I think that every positive whole number has an opposite. We would just move the opposite direction from zero and go the same distance. So if my 
segment was on 2, I would go the opposite direction from 2, so 2 to the left. And it asks, what's the opposite of 0? There is no line segment, so the opposite of 0 is 0. The opposite of 5 is negative 5. What do you think negative, negative 5 means? That is the opposite of the opposite of 5. Because there's 5, that would be the opposite of 5. This is the opposite of the opposite of 5. Can, we can read this as the opposite of the opposite of 5 or the opposite of negative 5. Well, if I put this on negative 5, the opposite of negative 5 is 5. Here I have negative 5. The opposite would be positive 5. And the opposite of that would be negative 5. So we said in the last one that this was 5, so if we take the opposite of that, it would be negative 5. Plot point B on, at the number that is opposite the number that point A represents. So A is at 3, the opposite would be negative 3. Plot point C at the number that is the opposite of the opposite of point A. Well, if this is point A, the opposite would be negative 3, and the opposite of that would be positive 3. Plot point B at the number that is the opposite of the number that point A represents. A is negative 4, so the opposite would be positive 4. Plot point C at the number that is the opposite of the opposite of the number that points to represent A. Well, here's A. Here's the opposite of A. Here's the opposite of the opposite of A. B is at the number, we're putting A at plot point B at the number that is the opposite of point A. A is 0. The opposite of 0 is 0. Plot point C at the number that is the opposite of the opposite of the point A. Still 0. Some of the labels on the number line are missing. Estimate the value of A and the value of B. Enter the values on the number line. So it looks like this is 1, 2, if we were the same distance here. That distance here appears to be about 2. This distance here looks to be maybe around 8. And 
maybe closer to nine. Then it says, estimate the values of negative a and the value of negative b. Well, if a is two, negative a would be negative two. And the value of negative b, that means the opposite of b. So if b is nine, the opposite of b would be negative nine. This number line has even less information. Let q represent the opposite of p. Can you estimate where the opposite of p would go? It would be this distance, but instead of to the left, it's gonna to go to the right of zero. Should be somewhere in here. Should look the same distance from zero, but in opposite directions. So this is gonna show us where people in your class placed that point for Q. So you can see my mark, and then when you're in class, other students will have submitted their answer and it will show up here. Can you estimate where the opposite of the opposite of P would be? Here's P, there's the opposite of P, and the opposite of that puts you right back at P. And then again, this is going to show us where our classmates have placed Q. Make sure any of those sentence frames are filled in in your workbook discussing opposites and integers.